Their sights don't have a first axis rail adjustment. You can adjust the scope head on the rail, but the rail does not plumb or plane. Shootable third axis is a big deal, but and, and really, weight's a big deal. Working on the V3X33. Uh, we're a ways out, but I was figured, you know, this video will probably be all pieces together because, you know, we're waiting for parts and whatnot. But MFJJ pulled out, like, I wanted the granite, check. And he said, well, what do you want for poundage? Y'all know, 75. What do you want for let off? 80%. Why does Dan <laughs> want 80% let off? More holding weight will actually make you point better on target. The average target guy shooting, like, indoors, 20 yards or, you know, mark distance, etc., cetera, uh, is usually holding 18 to 20 pounds of physical weight. It creates a balance between physical weight of the bow and holding weight back here to where you don't feel like the weight's out in front of you, so you're not trying to hold it up. That's the whole point of finding an adequate balance. The only reason to have like really high, high let off is if you're gonna hold it back for multiple minutes. That's the only advantage to that. Every other part of that is a disadvantage. It doesn't point as good, it's not as steady. So because you intend to use this more for target than hunting, it would make more sense to have a little more holding weight. And even, even at 75 pounds, 80% is only 15 pounds. It's still not as much holding weight as your average target bow would be set up at. So that's why we're going with 80%. And it's three feet a second faster on average. For sure. I want to see, guys, check this wall out here. This is something that Josh has on podiumarcher.com. That's his website. He's got all the mods. So if you are a Matthews guy and you're like, your local pro shop doesn't have it go to podium archer and uh you can order whatever mods and I, honestly i usually have three different sets uh, i have a 75 i have a 70 and i have a 60 and the 60 is at 85 percent left and that's my ground blind setup uh just for antelope and for whitetail just because uh well if you hunt long enough you'll know why and if you haven't you'll figure it out <laughs> you get stuck holding that bow back for a while <laughs> in that situation so what are we going to do for strings uh, well, we're going to make you up some uh, some of the podium strings, just a matter of what colors you want to go with. Yeah. Traditionally, uh, you know, I've only done white and yellow. I want lot, the but, podium so. archer special. All right, so you want the natural yellow serve. So, but it takes some time to get them stretched out. But we're going to build this up for this bad boy, and then hopefully here in the next week we'll have your your new hamski that we can talk about now. Uh, integrate style rest to put on there and get this sucker tuning and run some stuff through it. And show us that then you'll understand then you'll understand that appreciate dovetail. why you want this longer bow so uh, that dovetail is pretty sweet when you actually have sights that fit it correctly um this is designed for excel's sight so there's a lot that fit in the same dovetail but this is specifically for excel black gold is working on one that'll fit in here and they're supposed to be coming out with that the first part of the year a lot of other ones fit in here and there's a video on my youtube on podiumarcher.com showing you how each one fits because tons of manufacturers are saying, mine fits, mine fits. Well, I put it in there and kind of show you how loose it is. And yes, if you tighten it down really hard, it probably won't matter how loose it is, but it just, it seems wrong to me. It's kind of like an oversized hole with the bolt through it. Yes, it's holding it in there, but it, how- You should show everybody what you had to do with your 29. That's the original black gold dovetail. And I wanted to know how much you had to take off of it to get it to fit in there. because. At first glance, it looks like it would fit, but it's it's a little too fat, a little too tall. Um, and I took it over to my buddy's machine shop, and this is actually really tight in here. Uh, it, there's more powder coat in this one. Yeah. The one I tried it against that actually came out pretty easily, but we machined it down. If you look from the side, you can see how much we had to take out to get it to actually even recess in. And then we ran a ball end down that side so it would slide into where that intent is. I imagine they're just gonna make more of a, a trapezoidal shape, just like Excel when they come out with it, but that's really the only difference. It's not a lot, but it's enough that you can't get it in the hole. This was the only one I could find thus far that doesn't actually fit. Just about everybody else's will go on the hole. You know, some of them are a lot smaller, so there's a lot of slop in there. I really was kind of antsy to get this on a bow and know that it actually works and that the left to right is enough. Because one thing you're gonna run into a lot with this type of a system, is a lot of the sights left to right aren't gonna work. It's gonna, you're gonna need like an offset bar. You're gonna need something that moves this over. If you see how far over this is, this is not normal. Okay, so normally this would come bolted more square onto the dovetail, but I know that I'm gonna have to move the whole body to the right because of how far the bracket is mounting to the left now yep. on a right-handed bow. Like your Excel landslides, they, you can't sight it in. You have to buy an offset bracket for it. And a lot of people don't realize that when they get to that point. Uh, you'll run into that with almost all of them. And as we get more sights in here, 
uh, as the year goes on with production, we start, um, you know, helping people side in their bows and whatnot. We're going to run into how many of them need it. And at some point when we have enough of them to go off of, we'll make a video about which ones need a part, which ones don't. So you'll know ahead of time if you're buying that to make sure you get that extra part so you can even sight your freaking bow because nothing would suck more than spending $400, $500 on the site and you can't sight it in. That would not be cool. This is really, really, really smart. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm a single pin guy. I love single pin sights. It's it's like it's where my home is. I've been I've been shooting a single pin sight since 1996, like a long goddamn time. Like I was I was on single pin before it was cool by a long shot. Like I was like three percent of the market, and it was for a very simple reason because I realized from target shooting with a with a one pin sight that you shoot better when you have one pin. You point better, you focus better, you line up better, and your brain is more comfortable in that scenario. So from a hunting standpoint, I prefer it by a long shot because I don't think about what pin I'm using. I just look at what I want to hit and put the pin in the way, which if you follow some of the uh, training videos we've done with, uh, with Timmy and talked about what your mental focus is supposed to be, you're not supposed to be looking at the pin, you're supposed to be looking at the target. Well, when there's a wad of pins out there, it's hard to do that. When there's only one pin out there, it's soothing and it's comfortable. Well, this gives you the ability to have two pins that look like one pin. So when your brain just wants to look at it and focus and move past it, you can, but you're still gonna get the ability of extended range. And that's really what this is for. I know you're probably looking at this going, well, this is just a, a fast eddy double pin. That's not new. Well, that second pin moves up and down. So you can determine on your own accord how much you want that gap to be. Like, let's say your your goal is to extend your range as much as humanly possible. Well, move that pin all the way down as far as it'll let you, and then figure out what your drop is, adjust your indicator needle as such, and when that tape's on there, as you move it back and forth, it will point at whatever yardage the other pin's on. That'll allow you the most optimum distance you can possibly have to shoot. And that is the only negative about shooting a one-pin sight, is the pin is in the middle of the housing, and then there's just all this housing of distance you could be shooting and putting a pin in that you can't. Well, this eliminates that. Um, so for me, this is the ultimate so, so running and gunning hunting site. that uh, bottom pin, because you know what? Yeah. When it comes to elk hunting guys, I could see myself running this site this, this next year. No joke. And I would probably set that first top pin, that single pin, I would probably leave it at 30, 30. for me. Mm -hmm. And I would set that bottom one at 50. That would cover me from 20 to pretty much 40 with yeah. that top pin. And I could shoot and practice and get good, but also I could even pin gap and hit 40 and um, i have that 50 that i could eat. if it's 55 i i mean that just covers a, sh a well and let's range. and let's preface that by saying if you're if you're going to shoot you know a 400 to a 450 grain arrow this is optimum isn't that what people shoot well it's what <laughs> i hope it's what most people shoot because it's really the optimum setup and the reason that matters is because the faster your bow goes the tighter your pins are and the more you can get away with having like a 15 or 20 yard distance between those two pins oh. and not having to hold off by as much. So it's really important. This is super simple. It's a very simple system. You loosen the screw here. That's the lock screw moving up and then moving down. And once you find your sweet spot, you just set your lock yeah. tight. So this screw. will drop to there. That's where it stops at. That's the max. Okay. And when they, when they came out with this originally, which I've had this for a little while, they told me um, that it's about, it's an average of 20 yards on the max, but you can have it be less. And for most of the hunting I do, that extra 20 yards would really be perfect. And so it shows that dual, <clears throat> the dual adjustments there. Yeah, dual indicator needles. So you can loosen these guys. Because the pin moves, you need to be able to move the indicator needle and you can move it up or down based off of what yardage it ends up at. So you can accurately, as you adjust it out and move it, both indicator needles, that's where your top pin is, that's where your bottom pin is. And your pin gap is not the same all the way out. So that's why it's important that they adjust because you can't preset it for the same at one distance or other. You know, you, it may be only important to you to have it be the same past like 50 yards. Well, in, in that instance, you're probably gonna not have to worry about drop so much if it's in front of that. So from 50 and on out, that gap was going to remain, remain the same all the way out. But if you set that for 20 to 40 and then move your pin out to 50, it's not 70 yards. It's like 62 yards or 63 yards. So the ability to set that at what you truly optimally want to me makes it more superior. Um, you could put, you know, more pins in that, but it, the reality of the day, you want to aim off the first pin and focus on what you want to hit and ideally have it in the middle of the, of the ring. 
It's just, especially in those low light situations where everything's really hard to see, a dot in the middle of a ring is really easy to see compared to a lot of pins in the middle of a ring that might be a little low center, a little high center. It's hard to take that last light shot and be proficient. And at the end of the day, we all want to be proficient as much as possible. So this is just like the pro site as far as the adjustments? Yes, and the, and the cool way that they're doing this dovetail option, so the price of a direct mount site or buying the site with this dovetail already on it is the exact same price. So you can buy just the dovetail and buy a direct mount site. Now you're not stuck waiting for them to actually custom order it with the dovetail and waiting your four months. Um, we do have 200 of this dovetail on order as soon as they're available. And then you can put this dovetail on any of the mover chassis sites. They're gonna make it with three different attachments because all their sites are a little different, but all the relevant sites to the majority of people that we deal with your Ascent Vertex, your Mountain Light, your Ascent 3-pin or 5-pin, your Pro Sight, your uh, almost everything that has a movable chassis takes the same dovetail. So if you have that, all the movable sites become Matthews compatible. And it's not more expensive if you're buying the direct mount. So they're charging the same amount, so I just decided to buy a whole bunch of dovetails. That makes sense. So will you briefly review the first axis adjustment, which the Fast Eddie does not have, at least in my opinion? Axis 1 is right here. So that's the rail adjustment independent of the body. So when you loosen this screw, there's actually a micro drive on this for moving the rail square. And that's relevant because you have to be in line with your string. And if your string and your sight don't line up, you're not gonna shoot the same at distance. And now let's be realistic. Most bows today, they're telling you to move the cam left to right to tune it, right? Well, if you move that cam that way, that string and that riser aren't square anymore. How are you gonna shoot out at 90 yards and be on the same line if you can't move the rail to compensate for it? which is why you put a level on the string and move the rail to where it's level with the string. I'm, I'm cussing That's right now because this is why I'm going to end up with this site this next year. Sorry, dude. It's the, it's the truth. I've been asking because them to make this for five some years. Orientation. We're going to yeah. do some cam orientation. It's inevitable. Yeah, it's not going to be even with the riser. And when you get out there at a ways, you either shim the base of your whole site, which is crude and rough it's not exact and or you Jake can are going to continue to wonder why i beat him at tack at long range yeah, well, especially you know. it's because my stuff's dialed yeah because of first axis exactly it's pretty relevant if you tim jake don't watch this but that's <laughs> a fact is that i got that first axis joke okay yeah. uh, i got more questions can yeah. you quickly show the second axis third axis adjustment on this one okay so Super axis easy. one's the rail two is the bubble because this is bolted square to here so if that guy's level, you just clamp your, your Gen 2 Hamski like on here or on here yeah, and adjust that to where it's square and then make the bubble here match the Gen 2. And then this has a third axis that's and different that's than all. that's just cracking those two, those two wolves. That's yeah, that's this screw and this screw. It's the same ring they had before. And then the third axis, you loosen this lock screw and you thread this screw in or out and it plums the whole thing this way or that way. And it's fine enough that you can sight this in, not use a tool. So you can actually take this up on a downhill angle at like 50 yards and turn the screw in, turn the screw out until you hit the middle of the target like and then you're done. Like shoot it actually? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like which most sites don't allow you to do. This is a really well thought out One system. More question, this Josh. is more thought out than anything else. And I'm opinion. serious about yeah. this. Okay, yeah. true or false, there's a way to add, a, where legal, add a light kit. Oh sure, this. yeah, you just take the screw out here. There's a little, you actually don't have to take the screw all the way out. You take it out like four turns, there's a little plate that slides underneath it, you screw it back down, and then a light goes into that and shines down on your fiber. So when it turns on your fiber, you don't actually see any halo anywhere, but it just lights up the pin without a, without any other inflation. Where can I see them? Uh, yeah, I have them on the website. Okay, I have them downstairs. I have to get a couple clips of that because I personally yeah. did not know that. Yeah, it's a really simple system. So if you look at it, it's machined out to where you just set it in the hole, push it forward, back it off a little more. Tighten it down. And then you're right over the fiber. So you screw that in and shine it on the fiber. And you can see it lighting up there. And it lights up the fiber there. And you turn it up, 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 up. But there's no halo inside. And off. It's pretty cool. So if, if you're buying one of the new Matthews bows that takes the really low profile quiver and you want to take advantage of this integratable system, we've put enough of these on bows now that we know that the direct mount sights from Black Gold, whether it be a Mountain Light or a Pro Sight or an Ascent Vertex, if you mount them here, they do not get in the way of the arrows. So if 
you're on the fence about buying a site and you want to buy the bow and you don't want to wait. You can buy that site right now, bolt it on. It won't be in the way of your arrows. And then when this dovetail becomes available and they're actually out, you can spend the hundred dollars on the dovetail, take your direct mount off and integrate it back into your bow like you wanted, but you don't have to wait on a 400 or $500 site because that's what most of those are. You can actually buy it and function and use the site now. It won't be in the way of your arrows and then get it integrated the way you want in a month or two. You won't have to move the pens. You'll, you'll have no. the same sight tape. It'll just no. be just bam, bam. Yeah, but this site, you'll have, you'll have to move your left to right, windy. but that's it. Yeah, yeah, but it won't, well, this site isn't actually for sale yet, but it will be shortly. And I have a crap ton of this specific one on order. Well, I'm referring to any movable body black gold site with a direct mount. We'll bolt on here and clear your arrows and you won't run into any issues. Just mount it out as far as you can and they will clear and you can still use that low pro quiver system, which is amazing. There is not a tighter fitting system on any other bow that I have tried. It is really, really, really tight. So much so that your ham ski won't work like at all. You can put like two arrows in the quiver, but those new ones will, which I'm pretty excited to get hopefully in the next, should have inventory in two weeks. It was supposed to be here today. They didn't have the rings done. We got one for you and one for me because apparently we're special. Pros, all the pros versus all the cons in one minute or less for those that are looking at a fast eddy dovetail triple stack or even a fast eddy XL versus this black gold and including prices because I was under the impression I was going with the triple stack but mm -hmm. I know how much extra weight that adds to my oh mm -hmm. that's one of them so yeah. Let's spell this last Hey, you're, you're, taking, you're taking my... I'm sorry, my, my, bad, my bad. Yeah, I don't have a, a Dovetail Fast Eddy XL in here at the moment to weigh the physical difference, but it's a lot. Like that triple stack head's really heavy. There's a lot going on there. And that being said, that head's bumper. It's really well designed. It's just really, really heavy. Their sights don't have a first axis rail adjustment. They have a first axis bubble adjustment, but not a rail adjustment. And that's what really matters. You can adjust the scope head on the rail, but the rail does not plumb or plank. So that's one negative in that direction. And weight is another negative. I guess if you really wanted to have three pins, that's your option. And that's what you're gonna have to do. And you could always take a pin out or order that site with a pin out if you wanna wait eight months for it to get one. You know, if you custom built order one right now, that's how long it would take. But you could always run that with uh, just two pins in it if you don't want the extra clutter. And it's a really neat system, but just really heavy. Price-wise, if we're talking about equivalent, your pro site without the dovetail, 350. And I wanna say a Fast Eddy XL is like 380 with a dovetail. So you're gonna end up spending more on this site in the long run. It does have micro adjust rail adjustment. And outside of that, it's very similar features, but I was biggest thing is this, yeah, the, the, the shootable, shootable third axis is a big deal, but, and, and really weight's a big deal. And I, I bet you there's at least three or four ounces difference between the two. And when you're talking one that does a crap load more than the other for the weight, I get it, but if the weight's not really that different and they're kind of doing the same thing or really close to the same thing, I'm not sure the weight's worth it.